Hello, my dear fellow friends, photographer, and traveler around the world. Welcome again to Chris Lee Travel Channel. Today, I'll be sharing with you a one-off uh, episode, uh, introducing or uh, sharing with you of my hot air balloon rides uh, in Cappadocia of Turkey. And indeed, uh, this is actually a very, very uh, interesting uh, journey of mine while traveling to Turkey a few years ago. And uh, when I was returned, you know, from the trips, and a lot of questions for my friends have asked. But just before I proceed further, let's have an idea of whereabout is Cappadocia. Now, from the map you have in front of you, you can see the area where it's been uh, enclosed by the red line. This is the Cappadocia regions, and this is actually a big area. And on top of that, you can realize you realize that actually Cappadocia is not only a historical region in the central Turkey, which is about 756 kilometers from Istanbul. Cappadocia is a large region which comprises of foreign uh, provinces, namely the Nasehir, Kayseri, uh, Kisehir, right, and the Asave, uh, Malak Malakya, Siwas, as well as Nidi. So all together are seven provinces. Uh, and the nearest large city is Nasehir, right? So, uh, when I travel back from Turkey and uh, a lot of friends asking me a few questions, and most of it were relating to hot air balloons, and they always ask me, how much it costs? And is it worth it? Is it safe? You know? So, in today, why I'm by sharing my images of my uh, journey uh, on these hot air balloon rides. I probably share with you of my personal experience riding on this hot air balloon. And uh, <coughs> if you look at the map here, again, this is a tourist map of Cappadocia. It is just a big region, as I mentioned earlier. And the, in order to arrive, you know, as I said, the, the nearest uh, city is Nasehya. So you can basically access to this part of this region while to International Airport. This is actually the Nasehya Airport and the and Kayseri Airport, which is not far away. Now, topographically, this region right, is consists uh, of high platform, or some people like to use it as, uh, refer as plateau, of over 1,000 meters above sea level. And it was formed by volcano activities, now, possibly a few uh, hundred thousand years ago. And are full of uh, volcanic peak in this region. And this region has a continental climate, that is, with a hot summer and cold, snowy winter and low rainfall. Now, Cappadocia was one a kingdom that was issued during the 64 BC to 24 AD, which is short duration, and a Roman province, once a Roman province. It is famous for its wind skill for fanciful yet unique rock formations, and which is commonly known as Fairy Chimney. As most of our friends who came back from there, they like to mention about this Fairy Chimney in Turkey. And the staggering deep underground cave system, which is known to the world as the underground city. But of course, in today, I'm not going to share with you about the underground city which have been shared in my earlier episode to Turkey. So, uh, Fairy Chimney right, is a unique geological and corn like rocks feature. Now, the Fairy Chimney is the nickname given right, to. Uh, these so-called conlites rock formations, which were created over time, you know, by erosion of the relatively soft rocks layers, 
Now, now a geologic name is called Hodo. H-O-D-O-O. -O, Hodo. A term given to rock key structure found in Western America. So you look at the map here, you can see that actually the, the surrounding area in Cappadocia, uh, both north east south west surrounding the, the Nasser, the main city, are all have these unique rock formations. Now, if you were to uh, expose to any advertisement uh, promoting tour to Turkey, and you're not uncommon to come across that they emphasize a lot on Cappadocia. They also emphasize a lot on Turkey. And for one simple reason, because of the unique landform. So let's touch about this hodo, another term. It's actually a tall, thin spike of rocks that protrude from the bottom of an arid drainage basin or, or bad land, or bad land, quite bad land. Now, Hodu typically consists of relatively soft rocks, which is used basically as a mudstone, sandstone, or stuff, uh, which are kind of so-called consolidated volcanic ash, right? And, and are topped by a harder layer and less easy eroded uh, rock, which protect the soft layer, right, from weathering and erosions. Now, the size, shape, and color of Hodu's Vary, right? As a factor by two main factors, right? Firstly, the erosional pattern of the alternating hard and soft rock layers, and secondly, the mineral deposit between the rock type. So, besides the natural attractions in Cappadocia, it's also one of the world's most desired destination for hot air balance, right? Now. The, which provide you a panoramic view of this unique uh, landform. And the world renowned underground city and as well the cave dwellings are also found in these regions abundantly. But of course, in today, as I mentioned earlier, that our focus is only on the hot air balloon ride, right? And which I'm going to share with you. So before I proceed with the images of my hot air balloon ride, and of course, I need to answer the question that I posed to you in the earlier slide, which is basically how much it costs. Now for Malaysian, you know, uh, it costs about RM100, or equivalent to uh, USD25. Of course, then, you wrote, uh, Come the next question, is it valid? Now, my feeling of a whether uh, is worth the right or not, it's all depends on individual needs. Now, uh, of course, if you are the first time, you have never ride on any hot air balloon before, it will be a lifetime experience. And to me, well, if you can't get this opportunity elsewhere, which is abundant here, then why not? Uh, money spent can earn back, you know, but the chance to have a hot air balloon ride may not always be around with you. And mind you that even you be in Cappadocia, the day you intended to take the ride of hot air balloon, it may not be possible because the hot air balloons are very weather dependent, right? And the wind directions and or the risk of rain can also affect, right? And whether or not a hot air balloon can take off or it will be delayed. So in such instances that uh, if you're on a tour in a very tight schedule and happen to be on that day that you schedule for hot air balloon and the weather is bad, then I'm sorry to say that you were going to miss your chance. Of course, there are during our tour that we have some tour mate was opt out not to because it's optional. You know, a lot of tour agency in Malaysia when they promote a tour to Turkey, they always say the hot air balloon is optional. They mean that up to when I mean, you reach there, you decide whether you want uh, to go for it or you want to just lazing or time off. You know, while waiting for your, your travel mate to come back from the ride. And of course, some of them were probably afraid of safety, some of them were afraid of height, and there are many other reasons. 
But of course, one of the main reasons that the, uh, my team made the op out is actually afraid of the safety. But personally, I feel that hot air balloon is very safe to ride on. And because it's a, it's a slow movement uh, air, air flying object, and in, in these instances, that whereby you know somebody will say, well, uh, then why you are uh, you be so safe? Why during a bad weather you need to uh, call off the the ride? I believe there are many reasons. All right. First of all, uh, in order the hot air balloon will only take off only when the wind that the speed of wind is uh, lower than six miles per hour. Right, anything less than six miles per hour uh, are considered acceptable. And the too strong a wind can change the direction and speed of the balloon. And uh, too much wind can also impact where you you land, you know, the manner you land, you know. So uh, and too little and uh, and the balloon will not move. So in, in a way, you can see you don't have a situation by totally windless, where the balloon hardly can move about. At the same time, when you have a too strong wind that you hardly can control and you have some risk in the uh, landing as well. Now, the other thing is about visibility, you know, and if the weather is bad and the visibility is low, right, then the pilot of a hot air balloon need to be able to see, right, as I say, between one and three miles or rather about between five kilometer and fox can make the navigating a balloon very dangerous. And therefore, it normally they will only recommend a hot air balloon ride on a sunny, clear sky day. But of course, not all the while you have this perfect uh, gift from the God. And then on the rain and storm, right? Rain and storm must be avoided for hot air balloon ride. And you can't run away from them anyway, uh, like a plane. Rain, for example, can bring the temperature of the balloon down, make it much harder to control, and potentially uh, it will uh, come down, right? So all stormy weather is avoided when trying, right? When flying, sorry, even if it's an hour ahead. And uh, so, I will leave it to you at the end of this episode to decide after looking at my images and to see whether it's worth the right for paying uh, USD $25. Right? As far as safety is concerned, I should say that it's very safe because if the condition is not safe, the weather is not permitted, they will not take off. Right? And uh, there are some tips before I share my image uh, for the first timer. Uh, I was first timer. And uh, these are useful tips that when you prepare for your ride. First of all, use the restroom before getting on a hot air balloon. There is no toilet in the balloon, and in the ba basket of the balloon that is carrying you, right? Uh, wear warm clothing. Because the scene is going to get into the air, and the higher you go, the colder it will be. Right? So this is our advice. And write with a half full stomach. Oh. If you have a full stomach, it can, uh, can get you uncomfortable. Or in an empty stomach, neither is a good thing, right? So, so this is something recommended. And uh, take a camera uh, or a binoculars. You have one. Basically, I think nowadays everyone will carry with a handful of smartphone, which actually equip a very good uh, camera function. So I think I need to worry about whether you will carry along with you uh, cameras. So, uh, we're going back to this map again. You can see that uh, we are actually uh, arriving at this uh, main city and then we move on to this uh, tourist spot. And uh, now, this is the, actually the, the route that taken by my hot air balloons. And the blue circle is actually the launching pack, the area where we take off. And the red line is indicating that we are moving a circle uh, back to our original uh, launching ground. And you look at this map, you can the surrounding all are very unique. So the landform, this I mentioned to you, of course the ship are uh, vary from region to regions. 
So when we are loading into the hot air balloon, we work up, we woke up in the very early morning, and uh, I believe we reached there about six a.m. in the morning, and the surrounding is still pitch dark. And of course, we are given a light uh, refreshment or so-called light breakfast um, before we uh, ride on uh, the hot air balloons. And uh, it's, it's quite a big one. Uh, our one is quite, it's quite a big size uh, hot air balloons. We can accommodate about 20 uh, passengers and on top of the pilot and his assistant. And it will take a while. Now, it should take a while for the hot air balloon to bloom up to its actual side and be ready to uh, take off. And generally, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have waited more, about 20 minutes or, or more. Uh, before we are okay to say, come, uh, take a, take a, take a seat, no seat anyway, take a space, uh, in the hot air balloon uh, basket. And this is actually the similar size of the basket of hot air balloon we were in. You can see that the, the they are actually uh, divided into five sections. Four sections, the four corner, are being allocated for passenger, and why the center are strictly allocated to the pilot and his assistant so that uh, we cannot move about. If you are on the right hand, uh, right top corner, uh, then you are you'll be there, you know. So that, and they also make sure that all the uh, participants are equal number. I mean, if there are four, uh, if uh, four corner, each one you will say need to be four, all the four corner will be like four each so that there's a balancing in terms of weight. To balance the basket from from them from one side heavier, right? Than the others. And uh, in fact, this is actually is the view that uh, when we are up uh, and about to land, we are so early. It's a, a bit misfortunate, a misfortunate that uh, we are the earlier batch that we are on the sky into the air. And of course, still pitch dark, and uh, the first the visibility are low due to the sun have not woke up uh, on the day as yet, or rather, it was uh, considered a misty day. And uh, what we regret that uh, because of the, the environment, the, the weather on the day uh, is not so perfect, I put the word comma, uh, that the uh, picture uh, that I've captured for this uh, hot air balloon ride was no, uh, not so satisfactory in my personal opinion. And uh, only at close distance, you can still can see uh, clearly with a more vivid uh, color. But when far away, it's uh, all really, uh, really slow in the sense because of the mist that uh, making the visibility down. So uh, this is actually uh, on the way. We are on the way returning to our luncheon pack. And you can see the three of the hot air balloon are in the midst of uh, uh, preparations, you know, for launching. And uh, these two of them as well, you know. That, and while looking at the colorful hot air balloons, you can see the topography, geography, the landscape around these regions. And now these two balloons, hot air balloons, are ready for launching, right? But we are actually on the return journey. And this is taken while we are up above the sky. And someone will also ask me uh, how high did the balloon fly? And to my understanding, the hot air balloons uh, seldom fly very high, and uh, at most probably about half half kilo meter or five hundred meter above sky. But then that is not very common too. And uh, they're trying to fly low is for one simple reason uh, that you can have a better view of the surrounding because it's far up, far up in the sky. You can see clear of the topography and the landscapes. So ideally, and also they will try to fly low, uh, probably uh, 100 meter, 150 meter above ground. That is the usual height the hot air balloon will, f uh, will fly, right? So uh, this is some of the, we are, as I said, we had a few uh, early uh, balloons on the air, and therefore uh, not many, and uh, we are actually quite oscillated from the, uh, the launching pad of other areas. I understand there's one spot, the launching pad have more than 50 hot air balloons in our, in our area. It's uh, less than 10, and we have a few who kick off in the early morning. So now from this image, you realize uh, that now, uh, you know, it is uh, quite, uh, 
you know, you can see very, uh, we can't get the vivid color except the part of the balloon is nearer to us. But further away, you can see the background is all uh, uh, blurish and uh, uh, due to the, uh, the mist, the early morning mist. Well, this is one of the close view. Uh, we are running side by side with these uh, balloons. So uh, this is the spot that I'm referring to. They have a lot of balloons uh, upon the arrival. After we don't stop there, we just make a turn. You can see so many balloons was launching in this spot and uh, all the colorful uh, balloons. But the, even the light is right. You know, if you have a sunlight uh, in that morning, I believe it will give you a very impressive uh, uh, scene or some, um, image. So in this image, you can see that the number of balloons, but because of the distance away, the balloons are so far, it looks like it's whitish in color. But in actual fact, that it's all colorful. Uh, all these balloons are very colorful. Unfortunately, uh, unable to accept the close one, we can able to see the color of the balloons. I believe that uh, in Kappa, Tokyo, these regions, in the fine weather, and during the hot peak season, that every day there could be more than hundreds of hot air balloons launched every day, daily. Right? And some of them even can launch in, in the evening. And I actually went to the website and checked itself that they even provide uh, the hot air balloons right uh, for more than an hour. Uh, just to inform you, our, the ride is only for 60 minutes only. In fact, the actual time that we on in the sky on the in the sky is only uh, 45 minutes but of course they say it's one hour right you know and but there are option there are option for hot air balloon right of two hour or three hour or even longer but of course all this subject to also the condition of the weather on that day of course the longer the air hot air balloon right of course the fare will be correspondingly increased So more images of my hot air balloon right in the early morning. You can see that, that the, the sky is still dark uh, when we uh, launch, uh, take off, right, from the launching pad. So you can see that the, the small uh, village is right below us, and the far end is full of hot air balloons. To so pay attention on the landscape's uh, landform in these regions, which is the main purpose of why you're taking the air or air balloon right, is because I want to experience and to see their own eyes the uh, unique landform in Kapal Tokyo. So the misty uh, weather actually uh, uh, caused my image to be look very much dull and less colorful. And these are the images that are taken when we are about to prepare to land on our return journey. And while flying over this uh, unique landform, you need that there's some cave. In fact, this uh, cave was once a uh, uh, human settlement, you know, where the uh, residents in the ancient time live in. Can you see the, uh, uh, the pinnacle, the sharp rock, the spark in protruding above ground from this image? And, and also, also someone asked me, is it very shaky? shaky. In fact, it's not. Uh, it's, it's a very steady, uh, smooth ride, you know. There's no jerking or shaking, you know. The balloon just flew slowly and then uh, make a turn back. And of course, that uh, if a uh, phobia of height, you know, then of course, 
then probably is a challenge to you. So these are the unique landform that uh, we encounter during our tour. Uh, although it's only cover a small area, but again you can see that uh, it's different from region to regions. And this is actually uh, coming close to our launching pad again, a launching ground. And you can see the, uh, the far end there, the uniqueness, a uh, unique landform. Uh, and uh, some people like to refer this as a fairy chimney, is what I mentioned just now. They, they mentioned this as a fairy chimney. We did tour this spot uh, a, a day before, so uh, this is actually our second day, but the second day is early morning on the hot air balloon ride in Kapatokia. And uh, while I'm going through uh, this uh, hot air balloon ride, as I mentioned, that the uh, Cappadocia or Turkey is famous for uh, cave uh, dwelling. So you can see beside the, the role of those uh, buildings that are constructed you know, uh, right in front of this image. At the far back you can see a lot of dwelling was built uh, next to the cliff of the hill and some even dug into the, cliff, uh, the surface of the cliff. And you can see many of these uh, protruding uh, uh, rocks, they all are being dug with many, many holes, and these holes are believed to be either the door or the windows of the cave dwelling. So these are, again, you can find a lot of uh, cave dwelling in this image. And all the subsequent image basically sharing with you the various type of uh, landform in this region and also the cave dwelling that found in this region. So can we see even the door, built-in door, and window in this uh, image. The darker uh, colors on the top of these uh, uh, towering uh, rocks, basically is hard layer, and around the lighter colors, rocks are the uh, softer rocks. Therefore, most of the dark in cave are in the softer layer of the rock. Interestingly, we found uh, uh, in these sections, besides there's a dwelling, the dug in cave for the human to stay, they also have a lot of pigeon hole. And in fact, indeed, it's a pigeon hole, uh, meant for pigeon to stay. More of the dwellings, cave dwellings in Cappadocia. So, I have actually basically I've shared with you my journey uh, to this part of the world, and if you uh, share, I would like you to share with me your in your opinion. Is it worth it? You know, because that the uh, some of my friends say that it's not worth it, and some of my friends say it's worth it. But I believe it's very subjective. Uh, as I say, it all depends of your need, you know, of your requirement. But for a photographer like me, you know, in this trip, no doubt I have miss the uh, good appointment. I mean, I'm not be blessed with the good weather. In First of all, uh, our balloon will launch much too early. Right? And secondly is that, that the weather is not as perfect. Although it's, uh, uh, it's not windy, it's allowed, uh, hot air balloon allowed to launch on that day, but it's not so 
conducive or for photography taking. But anyhow, I still managed to capture some of this uh, aerial view of this Kapatokia landscape. I hope you will be entertained, right? So drop your comment to share with me and tell me why you think it's worth it or why you think it's not worth it. And uh, we'd like to know, you know, uh, the viewer opinion on this. Uh, meanwhile, if you are entertained by my travel logs and you're not subscribed, right? I would much please you can share, you know, subscribe and like. Right. So, so that, that your friends and family can be like you, you know, uh, travel the world virtually at the comfort of the home. And at the same time, I want to wish you safe and strong and uh, looking forward to see you in the coming week because in the coming weeks, I will bring you to China. And a preview of what I'm going to share with you in coming uh, travel log is that I will bring you to Sichuan province of China. I've been visiting Sichuan uh, province, I think, not less than three times. I think it's been three or four times. I can't really remember. And uh, trying to cover the north, east, south, west, or all, all corners, trying to cover the entire Sichuan province. Unfortunately, until today, I still have quite a large area yet to be explored. Uh, and which I plan, if I have a fortunate, I shall go again. But in this instant, I'm sharing my journey uh, to the western uh, western and southern regions of Sichuan if time permit uh, I pr probably also include my journey to the northern Sichuan I, I miss up the eastern Sichuan as yet because eastern Sichuan is at the much lower ground but the, the western part and the north and southern part are more toward the Tibetan uh, plateau, so it's more on the highland, which I think the landscapes are much more beautiful and attractive. That, that's where I brought me of visiting Sichuan in the early year. Right? And the most recent visit was in 1915, which is actually about seven years ago. I hope you, uh, you will enjoy my image uh, in the coming episode. And I have to say a word that I uh, thank you for staying until this hour with me. I wish you all the best. And see you next week. Bye.